Financial literacy has assumed greater importance in recent years for both developed and developing countries. Therefore, best practices in this area are still evolving. However, synthesizing from the OECD's high-level principles for financial education, some of the best practices are as follows. First, the financial education program must involve key players from the beginning. This may take a great deal of time and effort due to slow decision making process but will ensure success of the program in the long run. In particular, the consumers must be consulted to understand their pre preferences and identify appropriate curriculum and dissemination channels and tools. Therefore, financial education surveys must be conducted to appropriately identify the needs and to set a baseline for program monitoring. This will also help identify teachable solutions or teachable moments for low-income groups that may typically occur around the receipt of money, the need for credit, etc. Second, it is better to implement and learn quick wins to generate positive energy, such as starting from a pilot, launch initially before going national to gain the buy-in of all the stakeholders. Third, the program design should be flexible, enough to enable diverse stakeholders to join in and create synergies. This will also give the program high visibility and help partners achieve their own goals. However, due care must be exercised that messages are product and institutional neutral and can be used by all partners to create a multiplier effect. And finally, the program must enjoy ownership by leadership from participating institutions that increases the interest of the topic with stakeholders, politics, and the media. The National Financial Literacy Program, NFLP, is broadly in line with these guiding principles. NFLP pilot will impart financial inclusion or financial education and awareness on six personal finance themes, namely budgeting, savings, investments, debt management, financial products, branches banking, and consumer rights and responsibilities to about 50,000 beneficiaries from low-income strata. We should not ignore the important peer effects of the direct beneficiaries, which is very likely to be spread around the community. Those who have received education can pass on their knowledge to friends and family, thereby increasing the impact of the education. The program has been developed under the Financial Literacy Gap Assessment Survey of Beneficiaries. The survey has been help helpful in development and adaptation of curriculum and dissemination strategy. The curriculum will also be translated into national and main reg regional languages, including Urdu, Sindhi, Punjabi, Pashto, and Balochi. The program is financed under the ADB funded Improving Access to Financial Services Fund, IAFSF, and implemented under the oversight of the IAFSF committee, which has representation from the State Bank, Pakistan's Banks Association, Pakistan Poverty Alleviation Fund, Pakistan Microfinance Network, Education Sector, and the ADB. Upon completion of the pilot phase and impact assessment, of the of pilot will be conducted by a third party. Based on the experience and assessment of the pilot, the program will be scaled up to target more than a half a million beneficiaries all over the country. In addition to focused training sessions of beneficiaries, the dissemination strategy involves street theater, board games, comic strips, actively based competitions, website, and media campaigns to reach out the masses on a larger scale. The training sessions will be sourced from banks, MFBs, and MFIs based on their interest and predefined qualification criteria. In order to encourage and incentivize participation from partners, professional fees, and out-of-pocket expenses, our partners will be reimbursed from the program budget. Besides involvement of local institutions 
the project has formed international partnerships with international financial education programs, including microfinance opportunities, Finmark Trust, Association of Microfinance Institutions of Uganda, Sewa Bank, Microfinance Innovation Center for Resource and Alternatives, Micra, World Bank Institute, Alphatun, and others. Let me conclude a few points just by, with the thought that consumer protection and financial education should be vital components of any financial inclusion initiative. It is now clear that policies which focus entirely on changing the supply of financial products and services can leave consumers ill-informed, vulnerable, and not willing to participate in financial markets. Moreover, the focus of financial literacy program should be broader than financial inclusion. It should aim to increase consumer awareness about their rights, obligations, and, and, and mechanisms for recourse to build a fair, inclusive, and robust financial sector. In addition, I would like to encourage financial services providers to partner in the NFLP rollout and exercise proportionate level of accountability and responsibility to act in the best interest of their clients. Intermediaries should fully disclose their terms and conditions to clients before selling them a product or service. Finally, I would like to underscore what my colleague Summer had mentioned earlier. I'm a firm believer of this particular sector, and the State Bank fully supports and will support all the institutions to ensure this program is a success. I would like to thank all of you for coming to the, together to show your commitment in promoting this particular program, the financial literacy in Pakistan. I wish you good luck and success going forward. Thank you very much.